The Empire Strikes Back set the bar for what a real lightsaber fight should be. Yeah, Obi-Wan vs Vader is iconic, and I love it, but there's no denying that the choreography could be more exciting. Alec Guinness obviously isn't the most athletic person in the world, so no disrespect, but let's just accept the reality that this is a fight between two old men. Luckily for the duel on Cloud City, stuntman Bob Anderson was in the Vader suit, and we actually got some real martial arts implemented into the fight. I do karate, uh, kendo, and did a little bit of weight training. They sort of want to mix that martial arts flavor in with the traditional foil fencing. But even with all this, there's two reasons why it's still not a real lightsaber duel. For one, Luke was very unprepared. His training was incomplete and it shows. Throughout the duel, he makes plenty of basic errors and Vader has so many opportunities to kill him. Which leads to the second reason. Vader isn't actually trying to kill Luke. In order to fully appreciate the deleted footage, it's crucial that we first analyze what Vader's intentions are here. I must obey my master. Part of his motive is that he's a bit afraid of the Emperor, and so he needs to follow his orders and capture Luke. But as he reveals later on, he also secretly wants Luke to join him so that they can overthrow the Vader only has one hand on his weapon, and he's not even trying. He's just testing out Luke's skills, and is legitimately curious how powerful his son is. Which is why Vader is a bit disappointed when he falls right into the trap without much of a fight. All too easy. It's interesting, because if he had froze Luke and Carbonite right here, then he wouldn't have had the chance to reveal that he is his father. I am your father, Paul. I think his thought process was probably that if Luke wasn't yet powerful enough, then it wasn't time to present the option of teaming up against the Emperor. But Luke jumps out of the trap, and now Vader's genuinely impressed. The most impressive. Which leads into some cool behind the scenes footage, but first, quick reminder that there's a limited time 50% off sale for all lightsaber products on StarWarsAnalyst.com, link in the description. Anyway, maybe one of you can understand this deleted dialogue. I can't. It literally sounds like Bob Anderson is eating the microphone. Now, we know Vader didn't destroy Luke's family, because he is Luke's family. So I think this isn't deleted dialogue, but actually decoy dialogue. This one's a decoy. George Lucas did not want the big reveals getting leaked to the public, so he actually wrote some fake dialogue into the script. I kept pretty quiet for a long, long time, and I didn't tell anybody, not even Kirsch, because I just didn't want that to get out. And even when we shot it, we didn't give the actors that. In the script, the big twist was going to be, no, Obi-Wan killed your father. Then, later on, in some top-secret, heavily fortified underground bunker, James Earl Jones recorded the now-iconic- Anyway, at this point in the duel, Luke gains an advantage out of nowhere. He's now on the offensive and actually has Vader backing up. In the final version, we see Vader fall backwards off the platform, but in some deleted footage, things were supposed to be even worse for Vader. Luke would actually land not one, but two direct blows to his torso. I find it super hard to believe that Darth Vader couldn't block these super telegraphed slow wide strikes. Like come on, Luke is a noob! You are Darth Vader! Great call on George Lucas's part removing this little bit. The narrative that the duel is trying to tell just makes so much more sense without Luke landing these big hits. In the final version, it's like, okay, Vader underestimated Luke and lost his footing a little bit. No big deal, it's understandable. At least now, he gets a bit more serious and actually puts two hands on the lightsaber. His unfortunate new problem is that he's now away from the carbon freezing chamber, so he doesn't have a way to actually constrain Luke and bring him back to the Emperor. But he also still doesn't really want to hurt Luke yet, so I think his only plan here would have been to just overwhelm Luke as much as possible and pretty much bully him in the submission. You are beaten. It is useless to resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. It's not until Luke actually manages to land a nasty strike directly on the Vader's shoulder or neck area that he's actually willing to hurt his son. I mean, Luke's a real threat now. If not for that armor, this would have most definitely been a killing blow. So no more playing around, no more holding back. Now that he actually wants to hurt Luke, it's only a matter of seconds before he literally disarms 
stick with me because I'm about to change the way you see this duel forever. Vader did obliterate Luke, so it's understandable why so many people immediately assume that he won this duel. But I don't think it's that simple. Luke getting his hand chopped off was not the killing blow. Some people think that it was Vader's revelation that he's Luke's father, but that's not it either. So I would argue that it's actually Luke who dealt the killing blow when he chose to jump rather than join Vader. His own son, a final reminder of what his life could have been, had rejected him. Vader was not expecting this, and you could see how defeated he really is as he watches Luke fall, presumably to his death. I've heard people argue, why didn't he just use the force to lift Luke back up? But if you're asking that question, you're not realizing that what's more significant is that he doesn't do anything at all. He's absolutely stunned at the fact that his own son would rather die than join him. He's speechless, the emotional shock completely numbed him. And we see this cause a major change in Vader's psyche. He's now broken. He is 3PO dismembered. Keep this phrase in mind, it'll come up again. Throughout the entirety of The Empire Strikes Back, if an Imperial officer made any error, Darth Vader made sure that they paid the price. There's almost an excessive amount of force choking just to hammer this home. After the duel, Vader is standing on the bridge of his Star Destroyer and gazing out the window towards his son. Admiral Piat confirms that he deactivated the Falcon's hyperdrive, so when you see it take off in the light speed a few seconds later, you're just waiting for Vader to kill him. But he doesn't. He turns, looks back at the window in disbelief, and then walks away in defeat. For the first time in the entire movie, Vader doesn't punish anyone for their failure. But his lack of a reaction says even more. He's too upset to even bother with killing his subordinates. Yeah, you know, because he's really, you know, we're talking about his son now. So he's conflicted. It's not just hate anymore. There's more to it than that. He's 3PO disassembled. 3PO being dismembered and then trying to get himself put back together again is the physical manifestation of a common theme that repeats throughout the saga. But in the rest of it, it's either emotional manifestation or a personality manifestation of somebody that sort of ripped themselves apart and is trying to put themselves back together again. More importantly is what, in the end, what Darth Vader is trying to do. So sure, Vader did chop off Luke's arm and shatter his worldview, but Luke is the one that truly broke Vader and allowed Anakin Skywalker to emerge through the cracks. It's now for the first time that the viewer sees how pathetic Darth Vader really is. Not this big, all-powerful monster. He's actually a pathetic man who made some wrong choices, who found himself trapped in the world of evil. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. And the only people that can get him out are his kids. You already have Luke. You were right. You were right about me. I've got some extra footage from the Anakin versus Obi-Wan duel, so I would definitely recommend tapping over here because you are not going to want to miss this.